Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar video here on Lickin' Riff in which we're going to continue to explore the amazing sounds of the baritone guitar. Now, um, in the previous baritone guitar videos uh, so far in this series, I've been playing fingerstyle. Um, and I wanted to show you that you can strum this guitar as well, but you have to be very careful. So. If you want to play chords, you want to um, you want to maintain um, as wide uh, intervals as you possibly can. Meaning that if you have a chord like C, you might want to play it like this, okay? With three and three on strings one and two, you might want to play it like okay, uh, like this. Um, you can play it like this, but listen to the bass notes. Because you have this third here, okay, the third interval, the major third, um, it sounds a little bit muddy. But if you play C like this, okay, then it's fine. Because you have a fourth, you have a fifth, okay, you have this third here, but it's not low, it's high. So you have... Um, more space in between the notes. So that's what you want to do when you play uh, a baritone guitar and you want to strum it. The same goes for, for G. You don't want to sound the B note on the A string. Now, again, I'm talking about the chord shapes. Obviously, this guitar is not tuned into standard tuning. It's tuned uh, down to B. Okay? It's standard tuning, but it's in B. So uh, I'm going to refer to the chord shapes, Okay, um, just like we're doing when we uh, put a capo on, okay? So, okay? so um, okay? the G and C shapes are a bit problematic, but G, okay, if you mute the fifth string, is actually fine because, okay, it's, it's the A voicing. If you play G only with strings two, three, and four, and, the bass on the sixth, then you get the A voicing, which is the same as what I just showed you with C. So if you want to strum it, you can yeah, you can strum, but do it delicately. Don't attack the strings. Just okay, make sure that you're playing uh, chords in the family of E, A, and D. Okay, because those would sound the best. Now, if you do minors, okay, the D minor would work fine because the minor is high, the A minor, same thing. And with E, it's a little bit muddy, but this is it's in the middle, so it's safe. Okay, now, if you do it a okay, barred, then you're taking them higher. But if you want C and G, then play C like this and play G with with a muted fifth string. And then you can strum it. And suspended chords as well, such so two chords. But again, you have to be very, very delicate. Okay? You have to be gentle with the strength. You see, if you try to get too elaborate, it starts to get muddy, especially with the high, uh, with the low strength. Okay, so you have to be very careful with what you pick. Now, if you start arpeggiating, that's a different story. And of course, you should utilize the bass. Okay, you 
use as many bass uh, transitions as you possibly can when you play a baritone guitar. Okay? Even when you're just strumming chords. Um, That's what the baritone guitar is all about. Okay, utilize the bass notes, utilize the depth of the bass strings here, um, because that would kind of give you uh, a full, a fuller tone. You will sound like a, a one-man band. Now, for example, um, you can use bits of chords. <laughs> I'll tell you what this chord is in a second. And depending on what you want to get, you can do 2 3 on the bass or 2 4, okay, if you want a major sound or a minor sound. This is E major 7. Okay. Um, it's just 8 and 9 on strings 3 and 4. Okay, it's out of the full chord. Okay. But instead of playing the full chord, I'm just playing. Okay, strings one and two are open. I have eight and nine with the E bass. So. And you can do a major sound, a minor sound. Okay, mixing minors and majors uh, is always a good idea, okay? And you can also move it down two frets and you're, you have A add 9. So... top of my head. Uh, I, to be honest, I didn't really like this uh, example, but I don't want to stop and start composing. I want to give you examples. So, scale up here, you can use uh, 7 and 9. Okay. okay, you can move to A. Okay, you can do 7 and 9 on the 6th and then on the 5th. And then go to A. I didn't want to stop and compose, and then I did it. Uh, so sometimes it works like that. on strings three and four. Yeah, just throwing ideas at you to show you the kind of sounds you can get because you have a very low bass note. Okay, also the A note is very low. It's not A, it's E, but you get you get my point. Go 
course, if, if you're a songwriter, you can accompany yourself with just ringing chords. And let them ring. Any minors? Now, here, here you go. A chord that doesn't really work because of this, the the the, the minor second. Okay, uh, you have E minor add nine. Now, on a normal guitar, this chord sounds sounds wonderful. It's E minor with four on the D string. But here, it's a little bit tricky. If if you are pagiated. And it sounds fine, but if you if you strum it, not so much. The D was a bit borderline because the high notes here are also kind of in the middle frequency wise. So having too many notes which are not fourths or fifths are it doesn't sound quite as good as on normal guitar. If you do it upwards, okay, then it sounds fine because it's in normal guitar territory. But if you do D not so much, it doesn't work as well. Okay, if you do it here, then a little bit, it, it works a little bit better because the strings are fatter, even though it's the same voicing. But you see, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's tricky. It's just tricky to get um, a nice strumming sound from a baritone guitar. So you have to be, again, really careful about the space between the notes. Okay, which is what I'm trying to convey in this in this whole series, actually. So uh, I hope this I hope you found this video informative. Um, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and um, enjoy. Bye for now.